Hello everyone and welcome back to Ray Zero Space and Kerbal Space Program 2 where I continue testing in the third patch in version 0.1.3.0 with the dropship. This is a completely rebuilt version of the dropship that I featured in videos in previous versions of Kerbal Space Program 2 and I have made minor modifications and tweaks but nothing major. It's basically the same layout that we had before uh, with the vector engines. We had at one point put thuds but we'll try with the vectors so that we can test the vertical lift off off of Kerbin with the thuds it can't lift off of Kerbin and we have the jets as before because uh, the, their placement up front counterbalances the nuclear engine in the back and leads us to have a center of mass that's directly in the center of the cargo bay which helps with loading cargo and so if we see the center of mass it's right there uh, it, it might be a little bit forward or something but not too much and the center of lift seems to be right there, but I don't really trust the center of lift these days. So we'll we'll take a look at that. And the reason why it has the high wing is to not obstruct the cargo bay, which actually drops modules on the surface of other planets. So it opens at the bottom. And also because the cargo bay opens at the bottom, we have to have the landing gear uh, sort of off to the side. But we have to have the wings slope like this to have landing gear there. Otherwise, even with the largest landing gear, we wouldn't be able to have it reach the ground it's it's complicated so uh yeah uh the wing shape is partly determined by the cargo bay more than anything else really it's a functional decision so yeah uh, i have put two landing gear this time as opposed to the way we had with the previous dropship that's one change now we have the landing gear symmetrical on the body itself as well and that's just so that the rear vector doesn't hit the ground or anything so yes this is how it is and it will allow me to test different wing pieces than i've used in my previous tests uh, with the space shuttle i had used a small wing and uh, we had used the medium stabilizer for the vertical stabilizer i think or was it might have been the small stabilizer but here we are using the medium wings and we are using uh, for the canards up front the small stabilizer and for the Vertical stabilizers in the back, the medium stabilizer. So that's the mix we have here. Uh, for the first video I did with the third patch, I had used the large stabilizer for the rocket that we had. And so we've sort of tested that out. And anyway, no struts here. We're going to see if everything stays attached. And yeah, right now it's fully fueled. In previous tests with the dropship on Kerbin, I had unfueled the hydrogen tanks. But I'm going to see whether we can do something with this fully fueled. I have made sure that it can lift off vertically already. I did that test. So we, we can set that aside. Uh, hopefully it will uh, do the same thing that I got to do already. And But I haven't landed it yet. So I haven't gotten to that or anything else. I just made sure it could get off the ground. So here we go. Oh, it is nighttime. I had spent too much time in the VAB, it looks like. Okay, well, let's see if anything weird happens if I time warp. That's probably a good thing to check. Okay, coming out of time warp. Physics is back. All right, now let's stabilize for a bit. I have assigned the control surfaces to pitch for the canards, the vertical stabilizers do pitch and yaw, and the outboard control surfaces on the wings do roll only, and the ones on the large portion of the wing inboard shouldn't do anything. So we're not using them as flaps or anything like that either. They shouldn't do anything. So that is the arrangement, and I do have the engines action group. So first it's the vectors. Uh, you'll see the methane is under fuel because the pods that the whiplashes are on don't have fuel in. So that's for balance. Alright, so all that said, here we go with just the vectors. So very nice. Okay, well, jet engines. Oh, uh, don't pitch down too much. <laughs> I 
Okay. Uh, now, with the hydrogen load, I don't think the jet engines can keep us going safely. That's my supposition. Let's see. Um, I'm going to turn off the, the vectors. Yeah. Um. Maybe just barely. Yeah, just barely. It can fly like this, even with the hydrogen load, so that's not too bad. That's actually quite satisfactory. Alright, well, let's fire the nuclear engine and see if we can accelerate like that. Even with the nuclear engine on, it's not accelerating much because we're at sea level, basically at sea level still, so the nuclear engine doesn't get its full efficiency. Maybe we can go up here and try and improve upon that. You know what? Actually, let me revert this and we'll dump some of the oxidizer. And that will improve our performance overall. Because the jets are going to consume a lot of methane without consuming the oxidizer, so we're not going to need all that. We do have spare methane in these outboard pods that carry the landing gear, but let's just fuel about half of the oxidizer. But as you can see, so far so good. No wings falling off, you know. I'm thinking about whether we can launch this... Oh, I have to time warp again. Uh, whether we can launch this without having the whole weird boost arrangement I had in previous versions. Maybe we can get this to orbit on its own and then refuel it there. Okay, well, yeah, coming out of time warp seems good. Okay. Lift off. So we dumped half of the fuel and we're still pretty well balanced. It's a little bit tilting to the nose side, but we can actually counter that. Uh, don't do that. Oh, oh, it's bad to, um, it's bad to tilt up in VTOL mode. Uh, yeah. Okay, okay, that's not good. Oh. Okay, let's, let's try it again. Always nose down when you're in VTOL mode. Just don't nose down too much, that's also a problem. Oh, it, it's actually tending to nose up. Hmm. It was nice when it was fully fueled. Doesn't look like it's changed much. Well, one thing we can do is just light the panthers right away. Or um, the whiplashes. Sorry, not the panthers. Shouldn't be anything that we didn't encounter first time, but maybe we're accelerating up too quickly. Maybe we're accelerating up too quickly. We, uh, maybe, uh, yeah, let's let's just not go up quite so fast. That might help. Okay. So, let's throttle down a bit first. Yeah, what we need is to bring that prograde vector here, and then it's okay. So, we were basically just going up too fast, and the uh, wings sort of effect was too great for the engine gimbling to deal with, it looks like. Okay, jet engines. We're gonna get rid of all the oxidizer at this rate, so, um... Okay. Let's see what it can do with just the two jets, with this big hulking thing. Still with the hydrogen fully fueled. But, we probably want it full thrust now. I 
amazingly it can fly like this. But acceleration is not great. But maybe we can climb a bit before lighting the nuclear engine to swerve. So yes, the dropship flies again. Now we don't have any cargo in here right now, so that is a flaw. We do have many docking ports inside the cargo bay. One in the front, one on the top, and one in the back. Many aspects of this are not optimal, like the fact that the jet engines are splayed outwardly like that, but sometimes it can't, just can't be optimal. Alright, let's try the nuclear engine. We're going too slow. Let's see if we can climb quickly. So, can we get to orbit? That's the question. It's a tough call. Otherwise, you know, I wouldn't be testing it. Delta V wise, the swerve can provide quite a lot of delta V. Well, now it's supporting quite the climb rate. We're past the speed of sound. No problems passing it. But yeah, maybe we should dump some of the methane up front if we're going to take this straight to orbit. Even if this works, it's carrying no cargo right now, so it's not ideal. I don't know if it can do it while carrying car cargo. However, if we get to orbit with some spare methane, then that spare methane would represent what kind of cargo we could carry to orbit. Yeah, I don't think we're going to have the hydrogen to get to orbit this time. But promising. Well, that's the end of the jet engines, I think. They're still sort of smoking there. Let me just turn them off. In theory, they're off. Still some apparent thrust from them. Maybe I should turn off, uh, close the intakes or something. So here the swerve can get us going up and increasing our apoapsis, or time to apoapsis, so that's important, but the fuel we have remaining is just not good enough. However, I think this will allow us to do a landing test. I think I should try and land on this peninsula here and see how it goes. And that's nearly 1600 meters per second while carrying 11.56 tons left over there, so it's not bad or anything. I haven't put the RCS ports yet. Or much mop propellant, that is one thing we'll need to do. We do have a big old reaction wheel right there. Probably better to pitch down and turn to the left, if we can, safely. Well, if we can land on the rough terrain, we'll certainly be able to land on the runway. So we'll see. We gotta reactivate the jets, but we don't need them at full thrust. We'll just have them on standby, basically. Another option is just to uh, carry some, like, drop tank, hydrogen drop tanks. That would still be preferable to using boosters to get to orbit. Well, I've extended the landing gear a little bit early. Let's see if it automatically kills me because it's more than 200 meters per second or something. People had suggested that that was what the landing gear was doing before, but I don't think it was. Uh, I don't think that was what was happening at all, but anyway, it seems to be okay. We've got ground level reading there. If it's if it's the ground being bumpy that kills us, uh, that's no problem. We just want to see that we could plausibly make a landing with this on the runway eventually. But we'll try for the nicest patch we can see. Well. 
When I'm further away from the location, it seems less bumpy, and then when I get to it, it gets all bumpy. Here we go. We could try and land vertically, of course, that's another option, but you don't have too much of the VTOL fuel left. Okay, uh, oh, it's getting, it's getting, uh... Okay, I wasn't expecting a handbrake turn, but we survived so far. Maybe it's because of the way the... Why is the rear landing gear backwards now? <laughs> Um, I guess that's something that happens. Let me see if it straightens up. Okay, maybe we shouldn't try that. I wonder why... I mean, the front of it is... This is the front of it. I, I just don't know why it's backwards like that. Hmm. Interesting. Th this is doing something very strange indeed. Okay, but we won't get into that for now. Let's revert, and let me see if I can get to orbit if we carry less of the methane. Okay, not quite that much thrust, and go and go. Alright, we'll expend the oxidizer, it's fine. Now it's not looking like a whole lot of methane, but we'll see. This used to be called the heavy dropship, but I think we'll just conclude that this is the canonical dropship from now on. Don't see a reason for a lighter one. There may be an even heavier one, though this is the largest form factor for cargo bays. So, tough to see a justification for that, but who knows. Multiple cargo bays or something. Okay, let's just go for the rocket engine now. There's two little wisps of clouds that descend back there. I wonder what those are all about. There's surely an optimal trajectory for this. I don't know what it is yet, but there's got to be one. Well, I'm trying this one, whatever you want to call it. And we are past Mach 3. I'm just going to ascend now. Maybe the jet engines could help out more, but... Okay, well, we'll see what we can do here. It's looking tight, but okay. We could have dumped a little bit more of the methane. Ah, we might have just caught too much drag this time around. I'm trying to pull up, but I don't have any RCS. It's just reaction wheel on the engine, and the engine gimbling ain't great. Ah, uh, yeah. Well, a space apoapsis, and, but a periapsis that's getting worse because of drag. Really close to orbital velocity, we just need to dump a little bit more methane. I, I probably won't do another test of this particular idea. Uh, first of all, we are not carrying any cargo, so it's not a useful situation right now. But it does mean that this doesn't need to carry as much boosterage as it did previously, and may, might not need to launch vertically. It can probably launch horizontally if we use the boosters right away. Um, we'll have to see what kind of range I come up with, but obviously uh, doing it like this purely is not good enough because we're not going to be able to carry cargo to orbit and we really want to do that, even if once we get to orbit we refuel. And it might not be the most desirable thing to have to refuel in orbit first before going to the moon or Minmus where this will drop off its base modules. I'll have to think about that, or further away. Uh, really, there's no particular limit to where this can go. So anyway, this has been the first test of the dropship in patch 3, and it seems to be going quite well.
we did land properly once, although it did do a handbrake turn. I expect that it'll be alright on the runway, or it might do the same thing on the runway. Uh, it really depends on how the landing gear is feeling about things. I think the rear landing gear just had a... Uh, was a little bit confused, maybe. Maybe it's not good to have a tail landing gear, I'm not sure. So anyway, I'll think about that, but for now, with this not quite in orbit, and I'll definitely revert this, but potentially could get into orbit if we just dumped three tons of methane. Uh, but again, it isn't carrying any cargo, so I'll skip that. With that, I'll say thank you for watching. hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.